Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. So just looking at a Vauxhall Vivaro here, or you can call it a Renault traffic. So I'm gonna talk about forced regions. Okay, so this van has been to the main dealership and had various repairs which didn't fix the DPF fault that he's got. He's had, he said he's lost count how many region, forced regions it's had at the main dealers and at, um, lost the word, um, independent garages. So what I want to talk about and explain is that it's a waste of time doing forced regions. Um, doing a forced region, you are forcing the van to regenerate itself. People are listening to this same story every day. I've got three of these vans to do today. They've all got the same problem and all of them have got the same story. And I've done 50 or 60 this month and I've all had the same story as well. They've been to main dealers, they've been to two independent garages and the DPF lights on and the fault injection fault and they do a forced region and send them underway yeah it's fine it's fixed and they think the customer drives away yeah it's fixed it's fixed it's fine 50 miles later maybe 100 miles later bang the lights back on because why they've done a forced region so you're forcing the, the van or car to regen and the problem will come back because why because you're not checking why the car hasn't regened on its own Forcing a region is not a is not a repair, so you're just doing a temporary fix. If you can understand what I'm saying, if you force regen the car, you're going to burn off some of the soot that's caused a high pressure in the DPF. But shortly afterwards, you're going to drive down the road. The soot's going to build back up to here. Then, when your car needs to regen on its own, it's not doing it because you've got a fault, and then it just goes bum bum bum. You've you've got a DPF full again, so you're going around in circles. Let's force regen it again, and you're going around in circles. So I've done the repair on this today fixed it and I'm going to show you live data we're not doing no force regions so if I hold up the revs now on this I've already put the DPF cleaner in We've, I've repaired the fault that has caused the DPF to block so it's not going to happen again and if we hold the accelerator up this was at 58 grams of soot we're now down to 13.25 and you can see that going down away there hold the RPM up we're at sort of 2600 RPM there. Try and hold it up a little bit more. Close to 3000 RPM. If you keep an eye on that now, that soot's going down on its own without force regen in the van. So he's having force regens done and oil changes done every, 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 you know, once a week. And it's been going on for two years. So you can imagine how many force regens and oil changes it's had. Two years he's been dealing with this problem, he said. If we keep an eye on that, we'll get that down below 6 grams. The pressure now is down from 280 down to sort of 50, 50 millibars of pressure. Now don't get me wrong, I hate, you know, making some of these videos and explaining where other people went wrong. And I know some people can think, you know, this guy is full of himself or uh, this guy's always running another mechanic down. I'm just trying to ra raise awareness on this part of the industry that nobody seems to have a clue about. Everyone that brings a car to a mechanic now will just say, okay, we'll bring it in, we'll, we'll clean the DPF or do a forced regen. I've had people pull the DPF off, send it away to be cleaned, and then it, the problem comes back. So then they say, let's replace the DPF. Two and a half, three grand. And the problem will come back again because guess what? They didn't fix the cause. They didn't fix the issue that's going on uh, that's stopping the car from cleaning itself. So if your car has got a blocked DPF, it's not usually not because your DPF is a problem. There's a problem elsewhere. Um, of course, there's a small, small percentage of people that will cause that problem to set from very short journeys. You'd need to do at least three to four hundred miles of journeys that are less than a couple of miles for that to happen. So it's very, very rare. If you drive your car once every week or two for more than a half an hour, you're not going to have that issue. So this one has got now. We've already done the DPF. Is clean uh, and you've got an oil dilution fault here but it's had an oil change in the last few days it's not it doesn't need an oil change again so as soon as you get a DPF error on these you're gonna automatically get this oil dilution fault come up it's just part of the, the process that Renault or Vauxhall put into the system so the issue with this one was that the pressure upstream of the turbine was blocked so this side over here was flatlining as you accelerate it up like this but now you can see we have a matching graph, same on both sides. 
Now if I hold the grams revs up on this you can see the grams of soot that's going to come down to a couple of grams in a, in a within a few minutes now. So we're not doing the force region here we're just holding the revs after it's been the problem's been fixed and the DPS been cleaned. Oil dilution has been reset and if you read the fault codes fault codes are gone. Okay so customer's now on his way home he's nice and happy but like I said um, I don't like you know tell, telling people the bad side of the industry that what happened to some customers and um, it's not nice to to paint that sort of brush because not everyone's like it but it does happen very often like like I said I'm seeing 50 of these a month these vans with the same story everyone's got the same story I've been to six mechanics and they've all just said let's do a fourth region I know I know guys that are local to here and I, f I find it so so astonishing is it the word um, that I can go into these garages you know they, they'd call me in and say look we've got a Range Rover here uh, we've rebuilt the engine they've taken the complete engine out they've rebuilt the engine from the pistons upwards valves rebuilt you know that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a you know you need to be a pretty decent mechanic to do that and they're rebuilding an engine putting cylinders, valves, head gaskets, building that all back together, bolt by bolt, all bit by bit, everything's machined, fitted back perfectly, and then they'd call me in and say, we've fitted the engine back, we've rebuilt it, but it's got a DPF light on, and we don't know what to do. And you just, like, think, these are, like, top-notch mechanics and they're they're brilliant at what they're doing but when it comes to DPF people just like I don't know don't know what that is so I'm hoping by sharing some of these videos that I'm doing it's just spreading a little bit of awareness to you know most people are going in and they're you know they're paying for a replacement DPF that can cost them two or three grand and it hasn't fixed their problem and it's not good for the garage or the customer because the garage is then you know getting an airful from them from them from the customer they're also getting a bad rep from it and customers wasted money um, so it's just not a, an all-round not a good, good not a good situation I don't know a single garage within 50 miles of here that knew about DPFs until I started sharing some videos I had a lot of good responses from garages I had a lot of good messages I had people you know saying garages local to here asking me to come in and you know we want to take you out for a, for a meal or take you out for a pint you know we've had so many of these cars in and we've been scratching our heads until you put the videos up you've helped us out um, and if there's anything you need doing I've had a lot of good messages like that from people but I've also had a lot of bad messages I've had text messages emails comments on the videos from other garages saying you know I'm running down other garages and I sh and then I've had comments saying I, I'm running a DPF cleaning business like you are and I'd appreciate it if you stop sharing this information because you're affecting not only my business but you're affecting every other DPF cleaning business in the UK because now every every regular person knows how to fix their DPF um, as far as I'm concerned you know the regular person isn't really going to start trying to clean their DPF you've got to buy a lot of a lot of tools a lot of kit a lot of expensive diagnostic machines and if they if you know if someone's got the DIY knowledge to try and do it themselves fair play but if they haven't I think you've got to buy a lot of specialist equipment to do it properly um, so I don't really think I'm affecting anyone in that sense um, apart from yeah maybe some I mean 99% of DPF cleaners have said to me that I've helped them out with my videos but you'll get a small couple that are not happy about what I'm doing uh, I've had a lot of nasty emails and text messages um, from people that have you know calling me all sorts saying I shouldn't be sharing this information I'm affecting the trade um, but the thing is 99% of people who call themselves DPF cleaners or DPF specialists they're just going around mobile guys like myself and I what I hate about that is they're giving me a bad name and everybody else because they've got mobile DPF cleaners around here that advertise on Facebook mainly they'll go around and charge someone 250 quid for a DPF clean and they're using uh, a little aerosol can or something and spraying something in and then doing a forced regen on someone's car and then just driving away 
the next day the, the fault comes back and the guy thinks I shouldn't have called the mobile person out you know um, maybe I should have went to a proper garage and it may gives a bad image for mobile mechanics um, but I think you can have a good idea what someone's work or what what their reputation is going to be like not only by just looking at their Google or Facebook pages and reading their reviews but but you look at the um, look at the person that's coming out you know is it some guy in a you know in a 2001 Ford Escort rusty van um, with a, a diagnostic tool that costs 50 quid from Amazon is he coming out to look at your car you're probably going to get the same sort of quality of work from the quality of tools he's using I, I think and uh, it doesn't always mean if you've got someone with a, a 50 grand van and 50 grand worth of tools that they're going to do a good job either but I think you know the the, the success rate is probably going to be a little bit better I think in my in my opinion but um, years ago it was different you know the more the more of a grease monkey someone was was probably the better when you were working on cars in the 1970s 1980s maybe the 1990s but today you don't need to it's not just being a grease monkey you need to be uh, a good technician um, and you need to know a lot about how to use electronics and tools and test a lot of stuff which most guys around here don't know how to do I know guys around here if I was to call them in for a hand and say look I need the engine taken out of that van put over there and this engine put back in no problem but if I ask him to test you know is that sensor working or is the DPF pressure good on that van over there they would not have a clue um, and I'm just trying to get rid of that sort of area I think what I'm doing is I'm sharing information just making general knowledge I'm improving the industry in my opinion um, and so the whole part of this video was to talk about the, the forced regenerations if you are a garage that is going to do DPF cleaning and you get someone come in unless it's 100% necessary I've, I've only done in the last three four years maybe two or three forced regens just because it was necessary I had to do it or there was something I needed to test certain cars you want to see does the force regen work like a Honda I done recently um, I knew it wouldn't do a forced regen because I was told by other guards that when they tried to do a forced regen the temperature doesn't reach so I had to turn them set off a forced regen and test that for myself um, but apart from that if you're doing a forced regen make sure you fix the problem first because at least if you're putting the car through the stress of doing a forced regen for a half an hour at least fix the problem first is all I'm saying so another little bit of a just a talking video here so see you on one of the next videos